It was 13-2 in favor of DSG. What a dominant performance there on Pearl. We get ready for game two match point. But Tanner Dryad, welcome back to the desk. Great job. But Tanner, man, they brought DSG brought some fresh ideas, some fun ideas to the table. What did you like about their approach? Yeah, you know, uh, I, I think DSG are definitely cooking. Um, Chris <laughs> definitely showing us some things. <laughs> we kind of talked about the uh, the Yoru in the map as, as we kind of got there. I'm always maybe like the Yoru kind of leaves a little more to be desired every time that I see it. I think in, in some of the things, this is this is how I'll put it actually. What I'll say is I don't think DSG showed their entire hand with what they have cooked in this double duelist Yoru comp. So I'm excited to see them play this again if they choose this comp again later on, you know, in the maybe in the bracket stages or even later on in groups where they do have to give us a, a bit more of the the Yoru dish, I guess. That's what I'll say. <laughs> we love a good uh, a good judge defense too from Katarina. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Triad, you, you pointed out that the aggression that Van Lin was showing in several rounds, um, maybe too much, but how did DSG play around it so well? Uh, DSG, it's really nice to see. This is a team that I mentioned it during the cast. They were really patient early on and into this early second mm -hmm. where if there's going to be an aggression coming through for the defense, you're going to know in the, the first 10 seconds, maybe 20 seconds. And, and so DSG in those early in that early part of the round they were waiting around they were waiting for this they were waiting for the cues as well for the guiding light where it was going to be coming from because you always had sunrise and goob playing together and so you if you had a guiding light early on towards a you know the jet's going to be there whether it's going to be with the operator as she was able to find some success or it was going to be with the vandal whatever it is uh so a dsg that was able to read this very nicely and to mm -hmm. dodge uh, the, the kind of risk scenario that could be the rounds going the other way around. DSG also did a good job of uh, just their mid rounding in general, which is maybe something that they were trying to to work on in what could maybe be considered some of the lighter matches for them because we expect this team to do so well. So they come into this one and say, hey, let's just go play the game. Uh, let's feed each other information and let's kind of dance around the map and, and play around it uh, that way versus having these set stress, having these set hits. Uh, what I did like about the Van Lin aggression and what I want to see more of as we kind of shift our focus over to Fracture is stay aggressive, right? Uh, Fracture doesn't quite work like Pearl, but it does work in way of you still have to play around the map or it, it benefits you to play around the map. Cut off one quarter of the map so you're not guessing as heavily as to where this attack might be hitting. So just continue that aggression. Don't, don't get locked up, you know, rotating through your spawn. Uh, continue to play uh, around the map, right? Fight for certain areas like they were doing here on Pearl. Tanner, you're telling me that Van Lynn should be insane, you know, keep repeating something and hope for a yeah. different result. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, sure, yeah, sure, <laughs> sure. sure. <laughs> At least it's a different map, so I totally agree. But speaking of that different map, Triad, we have Fracture coming up. Talk to me about it. Yeah, you guys were mentioning the aggression coming through for Van Lin. If you're going to bring it, which obviously it's a great idea on Fracture, especially when you're in defense, trying to push those extremities a lot more. But if there's a team that is going to be aggressive when the execute comes through, you know it is going to be DSG. Uh, DSG, as we've seen, not only in the first map that we had, but when they were getting some practice right before game changers, they were always playing a double duelist composition uh, on Ascend and on Bind. It was with Arena. Uh, and now we got to see the Yoru. It seems like Refracture. It is the one that you are actually expecting the double duel list to be played out. And it would be more something like a raise and a jet. Though they can honestly do whatever they want because they, that's what they've been doing and it has been working out. Hey, Dryad, just try it just say what you want to say you I want to say oh, i want them to play a brain <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what dry is trying to get out of here hey yes the, the double duelist it looks great guys dsg keep doing what you're doing play the reina um i, I do think double duelist <laughs> is an option here i'm hoping that we do get a different look uh at the the inverse on the inverse side the the flip side of the coin for van lynn i'm expecting a sage which again doesn't necessarily you know, counter uh, a duel specifically, but it is a good way to, you know, if you're not going to fight aggressively on one side of the map, you can just toss up your Sage Wall and that side is okay-ish. Or if somebody is going to try and go that way, it's a lot of the times audible compromise, right? You're shooting the wall yeah. down or you're blast packing or dashing over the top. So I think there are ways if we do see a DSG double duelist comp that Van Lin can, if they're not playing aggressively, maybe try and slow that comp down a bit.
Yeah, that seems to be the key word there. Slow them down with the wall, although they can just climb over it. But yeah. <laughs> tough loss for Van Lin, though, Tanner. What are some things that they, you know, besides the aggression, something that, that they can take away and hold their head, heads up high about? Yeah, I think, I mean, again, nervous. Playing this DSG comp <sighs> for any team in, in group, uh, in the first game of groups, I don't think that's going to be easy, especially for players who might not have the most experience. But looking at that one, like, you were winning duels. Like, you should be confident coming to this <laughs> yeah. one. So just stay confident. Oh, my God. Stay confident. <laughs> Game two. All right, Dryad. Break me through what you're freaking out about. Guys, I'm freaking out right There's now. There's a freaking Reyna, dude. Why is there a Reyna? We, we have four different duelists right now. You actually don't get this anywhere else but here. You have a Jet, you have a Neon, you have a Reyna, and you have a Race. All in the same lobby, all in the same map, happening at the same time. <laughs> yeah, uh, okay, fun, sure. I guess this is, this. yeah, this is what we're doing. <laughs> Look, I'm, I'm having a great time right now, Tanner. <laughs> and we get, we get, we get Katarina Stone out of, out of all things. This is actually something that makes sense to me. And in one of the points that I mentioned early on, it was the, the fact that Katarina, she she streams a lot. And I watch her stream a lot. <laughs> and let's just say she plays basically everything that you can imagine. And and a lot of times she's uh, actually filling for the squad, she's filling for the team, and she's playing a controller. So a brimstone at Nashra, this is something that she's used to playing. She brings not only insane mechanics, but an insane amount of flexibility that we get to see now. Three smokes and a stim beacon here on the attack for Katarina. Uh, light shields, uh, typical brimstone buy, but a buy that says they're probably looking to go quick. They are running into the strong side of the map with some early utility will actually keep the attack at bay for a moment. And for the Neons, uh, this is something that you might be expecting, especially for the, the combination of these two duelists. The presence source a halls That contest as well that you have early on, and the capacity as well, but the two to get out of it. Good flashes, another one that follows Lazy Lion, though, quick into the action. Another kill found, tap, tap, tapping away with the Ghost, and we'll open things up out towards the safe side. It's bought the rotations, but the SG aren't committing here. The ready two nice picks early on, right? The, the Breach and the Neon no longer available for this round. And the defense, and something that you mentioned, right? How are these rotations, how is their reaction going to work for Van Lin? to make sure that it doesn't happen the way that it happened in Pearl. It was in time, it, it, that it could be a little bit more reactionary, but being in right place, right time. But in the meantime, though, that's probably going to get planted by Katarina. And it's a 5v3 to work with. Van Lane just coming back from Sands. And the player advantage for DSG typically means good things for that squad. Corners not quite being cleared fully, and Lazy Lion wants to try and jump their way into the kill feed for the ace to try and match that of Katarina, but she will not allow it. So we pick up where we left off for DSG. They find themselves an early lead. Now three pistols, one for this squad. Playing kind of the, the same thing that we saw early on, right? You don't see them pushing towards a holes right away. They wait just a little bit before going in. They're able to catch one of the players of guard. The Neon backed up as the smokes were going down, and that just gives that full A side to take control of. So a 4 1 now for the players towards the south part of the map. One on the other side, and the pinch that is coming through for the Cypher actually has to get out of it. It's unstable this time. We'll jump ship, head back to the other side of the map. Not quite linking up with the team, though. Still looking to play this long con, working their way out towards B site. Meanwhile, an open A site, some aggression from Van Lin on the top side of the map is met by nothing, and they'll be forced to retake an A site once more. And of course, it, this is round two, so. Star removed. It does get a lot more difficult on Sable, just waiting for his time to catch. <sighs> That player on the other side, but you're expecting this round to go for TSG. Yes, if one enemy remaining. Yeah, I mean, okay. All right, okay. Okay, multi kills from Misu from uh, controller to Reina player. Is this three different Reinas now that we've seen? Katarina played at one yeah. time, 
Unstable yeah. played it one time. Now Misu's getting an opportunity to play the Reyna. Yeah. How fun for them. The goal is to have everybody play your Reyna at least one enemy remaining. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which is strange that they didn't bust it out on the uh, on the pearl, because that is it is a map where we We've actually see we, the arena. Actually, DSG played it. DSG, the, the, the challengers roster, they play the arena on pearl. So we're wrong. We're wrong in the first map, but we get it here in the next. It's a full buy round for Van Lin. Only a bonus for the potent one for DSG, as they've already found one early frag to kill Joy down, which means it's you till not going to mean anything in way of stalling power on this B site. And just, gee, they mix it up. They go quick here into this B site. They open things up, but the results are the same. They find that spike planet. Next stop. And, and once again, following the win condition that they found on Fur, right? Getting that spike planted, playing for this post plan. It was so effective. 10 out of 12 times it worked on Pearl. And for this map, it becomes even more crucial. Nailed it. Not a clear way back into this site. Goob, the first one taken down. Meg will find a trade. Lazy Lion will grab three on the round. Unstable. And Misu will hop into the kill feed as well. It's a third round. Thryad, you know what I'm noticing? This has to be April Fools or something. What's up? On the util on the mini map, there's a little Tacta Bear sticker. I was wondering what it was. It looked like a little piece of poop. And I thought, what is that? I took a deeper look. It's look where the alarm bot goes. It's a, look, it's a little tacta bear out towards B site. Wait, what? Do you see it on the yeah, map? Yeah, yeah, I see. It. <laughs> Shout out tacta bear. <laughs> anyways, anyways, back into the game. It's it's quick once more. I mean, it is just DSG running it down here. Sick just has no escape to so try to go on the aggressive. Unstable creeps their way back into the spawn. And this is a lesser buy for Van Lin. They do good. good Find at least one. We'll see how much more damage they can do to the economy here of DSG, who invested, obviously, rifles into this one, but a showstopper as well. The result is exactly what they were looking for as they'll pick up a force. Shoot the bad guys. Not and I plan. swear, since the map won, it, it just seems like for a lot of rounds, it ends up being... A little bit unlucky for Goob specifically, where uh, you see Goob positioned towards one part of the map with the Operator, with Marshall ready to take that first duel. And it seems like every single time it, it is a push coming through from the other side. So uh, Goob not really getting his the, the, getting the chance to, to show off the way that we would like to see this jet. And again, I mean, position towards B, nobody there. With an operator, too. Nobody yeah. home, but this a Goob kind of able to work as a deadly stage wall, right? Cut off this quarter of the map with the operator. Say there's no hey, shot they make it out this way. We'll see how long that op stays planted over towards B main. Is inside A main. We get a little bit of action, but the trays are there. Meg will find their one and look to back away. Katarina now trying to pick up the pieces. And I mean, getting run down, Meg gets out of jackass. It gets out at a good time, but then comes back a little too early and will be punished by Katarina. And that was a space created too by... The, the patience early on, the, the attempt of a push as well for Van Lin towards that A side, it, it doesn't end up working out. Of course, it's only the trade to work out and still, the spike to be planted. Goop now is here. It's just no way out. And Van Lin just... There's a lot of angles where they're not expecting players to be. They, it just seems... There are times where they think they're safer than they are. So Goob just jumps for that leap across Sands. Gets Last punished for it. Doesn't really have any options on the way out. Time. And now the kills are starting to come their way. But yeah, like you mentioned, there's just no time on the clock. Van Lin did their darndest to work their way back into round five. But they will not be able to do so. And it's a Red Bull clutch the way of Lazy Line as that spike explodes. Brimstone. That was wonderful. So the two players both get taken down, but uh, I Everybody else was backing out, knowing that the time was not really on their side. And like I told you, same thing happened again. Goob on the other side of the map, not able to, to find the answer early on. And it's just kind of the, the trying to have the read into what this DSG squad has. But it's been quite a little variety from them, even in the five rounds that we've seen so far. Now, 
Another pinch coming through. And we saw this before. Unsable just left. Yeah, Unstable left last time. Unstable. Oh, things are getting awkward. Finds the angle. Isn't backstab, but still loses the duel. So Sunrise starts things early here for Van Lin. And I think it was round eight where we saw Van Lin start to work their way back into the game on Pearl. This time they have a chance with an early oh. frag here, Dryad, to do it in round six. And this is interesting. Immediately, TSG knew there was a pinch thanks to that info. That Unsable was able to get, uh, the push was coming through from Arcade, and immediately that rotation takes place. A spike once again planted now towards A. There's an Orbital Strike to work yeah. with. Yeah, also an Incendiary, so Katarina has options to try and deny. There's Orbital Strike for Orbital Strike, so used early here in this one, and it's all up to the gunplay now. A 1v2 for Goo, who's got the knives in hand. Misu finds safe passage on the cross. Under sight here, and yeah, there's only one blade left. After this, it's a classic. Gun here. Goob just gonna try and find a weapon. Maybe hop away from this one, see if she can do some extra damage. Jumps down on the side, Misu standing in front of her. The dink is there, but it's only a phantom. Phantom moment for Goob, and a six round win streak moment for DSG. Now do it again. Picking up that gun and going for the fight at the end that Misu ends up winning with. Arena once again on side, and something that we've noticed about the Last arena player. too is they, they've been saving at least one of those leers for don't. this post plant scenario. And, and when it's just one, two players left, that leer it, it feels like it just never goes away, like it's staying there forever. And you need to coordinate how it's gonna get shut down if versus Goop to, to back up and at the end to get that round number six to DSG. I mean, is DSG, are they showing us that they are a team full of duelist players that can play other things? Maybe, yeah. I mean, you, you already mentioned three of them already play Reyna. <laughs> yeah, and two of them played duelist last games. It's a new two that are playing duelist this game, and the success rate looks <gasps> the same. Katarina went off last game on Jet. Unstable had a, a really strong start on the Yoru, and now Lazy Line and, and Misu are, are kind of picking up the reins. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's not bad. And what? <laughs> Looking pretty good for DSG. And part of it is the tools that Lazy Line has been using. Right, we saw the showstopper to enter into the A site a couple rounds ago, uh, and. Just how coordinated that look. I know they, this team hasn't been together for the longest time, but but you see how kind of the, the mix of the experience with the coaching staff, with some of the players, is really playing out. And they continue to have tools to find success into this round. Yeah, quick once more. Rolling Thunder oh, queued up feet. here. Van Lin gonna feel the earth beneath their feet start to tremble. Goob was stunned up and had no way out of that one. Lazy Lion will capitalize exactly on the stun jet. Are. And with that, they stun their way into spawn. They put their bodies right behind it. Sunrise gets a kill in response, but it's only one. And information aplenty here for the two that remain. And that spike is headed around the world away from any of this confrontation here. And that's, once again, thanks to the ultimate, to the neutral theft coming through. It spots both of the players actually wanting to go for the retake from Arcade. And without this fight, it ends up being planted towards A. But a couple players remain on B, and they're going to handle it just fine. Round number seven on the set of DSG. Maybe I had cursed when I said they could come back in round six. Uh, Round eight is where we saw Van Lin find their first on Pearl. We're about to jump into that round here on Fracture. And I believe they have a buy behind him. And they've got two alts that are, I guess, especially good for retake, right? Allowing DSG to, to take the site. They've been doing it every round, I'm pretty sure, except for a few. Then now you have that Rolling Thunder. Now you have that overdrive to be quick into it. Instead, it's on the start of the round. They look for some early aggression. It's Unstable once more. Under fire! What a double kill from Unstable. How much more can they get? The Neon just dodges no out way. through the cage. They go. Unstable survives completely unannounced. Now the backstab here for a third kill on the round. Wants a fourth, and Unstable will get it. 
unstable has been playing alone in so many rounds waiting for this kind of opportunity to finally take place and the idea you see the timeout you see the plan and how it comes through for this out of Van Lin, when when they use both of the ultimates available into it, try to catch the players that would be in the south part of the map. But guess what? It's only unstable, and unstable is enough to handle everything. Really well done as well. And the plan for Van Lin, it was still good. I mean, how many rounds have we seen players in this area? Yeah, a, a main has been. Oh. I mean, we see it again. Oh uh, this God. is this is exactly why Van Lin were expecting somebody to be there because DSG keep throwing bodies at it this time there's a kill behind it Meg gets one back that trusty judge in hand but won't be good for another Zatanna can find her first kill on the server Hannah's just been happy to be here yeah thus far everybody just having a good time for DSG and with that Van Lin Trapped inside their spawn. It's Guardian first up for Goob. Shots, they don't quite land. Misu completely untouched until now. Moni making themselves known here. Beautiful shots there. Three kills for Moni. And away back into this one. Put an orbital strike back online for Katarina. The Brimstone has the high ground. And Katarina, of course, will have the frags. No util or ultimate needed to secure the knight. And potential 10. With... The, the way that uh, the economy starts to look One enemy remaining it, it's a van Lin that gets enough money to get, go for the buy they maybe find some early success but it's kind of the follow-up the, the one thing that dsg has been great at denying every single time now with four <laughs> ultimates on their side out of charge lockdown the, the one chance the one possibility to slow things down maybe an orbital to strike too but they try to go for it and, and once again when they want to play aggro here yeah, get aggressive, but through the smoke, Katarina will claim one. Megan Sunrise just looking to get out of dodge after that one, but I don't think there's any slowing this team down. Lazy Lion, Satchel down, Rocket out. And nobody's home. It is going to force the defense off the site, so the Showstopper will do its job, and it just forces Meg right into the welcome arms of Misu Goob. Now the next one up is the Empress. Backs away for a moment and gives some space to breathe the defense. And look at Unstable. On the other part of the map, was waiting for the Killjoy Util to be out of range to go for the backstab. Yeah, now the Empress makes themselves known. The backstab will finally make good. And Lazy Lion says, hey, I didn't get a kill with an ultimate, but I'll do it with the rifle. Another flawless round for DSG as they find double digits here in the first half. And they did it also in the map number one, but it, it was some uh, the first round that we got to see for Van Lin and ending up the two that they got in they have this looks a, a little bit more for the DSG that is really planned out into how they're going to answer to okay. the, the aggression that Van Lin want to bring up and, and something that we mentioned too we wanted to see the aggression Van Lin has gone for it in so many rounds sometimes they find a kill sometimes they find a trade And again, they'll look to fight, but the util is just a bit too split, and Lazy Lion dances around all of it. Needs to be there to collect for another. And, and yeah, we really are seeing DSG, just a, a team that everybody can frag out on, especially yeah. in this duelist role. Sunrise will get one back, but this round's still just a bit out of reach. Beautiful flash. Most players look away from it, though. They were ready for this push, and now they bring the fight right back to DSG. There's an ultra strike, though. There's a chance here. Coming through for both sides. It's gonna work a lot more though for DSG. Hey, Katarina just planting her feet just on the other side of this one. Dancing through though is sick. Here comes that orbital strike that we mentioned. Sunrise sends one back and Katarina holds her ground. Hannah finds one before leaving. Last round before the switch. And with that, DSG will find an 11th in near. I'm gonna jinx it. A near flawless half. With a chance as well to do so. Alarm bomb. And a plan with the mental game between the two. Yeah. We do see a TSG that yeah. sometimes really gets hungry for those kills. We've seen it kind of with the backstab in a couple of the rounds, but it right always, there. at least on this map, ends up going their way no matter what. Lockdown still gonna be there for Mooney. The last chance to use it here. 
And nobody in vicinity of that one there. Goop takes an early duel, and I mean, Unstable just continues to do unstable things or continues to make this defense unstable by finding these frags and cutting the numbers down. Another neural theft for information as well. I mean, it's just all galore. Uh, you get an ult, you get an ult, you get an ult. Everybody check under your seats right now. I promise you there's a DSG ult waiting <laughs> for you as they just push inside the spawn. They want to do it flawlessly. Megalodon will stop that option. It's a round win, no less, and it is going to be that eventual Switching flawless sides. first half. At this point, I'm also pretty sure we've seen at least one time where every single DSG player got a 4K on this match. <laughs> And I feel like Hannah was the one missing. Guess what? She just got her 4K. Everybody gets 4Ks today for this out of DSG. One round away from moving forward. I'm getting that victory from that first match of Game Changers. A lot of players coming back. Some of the players out. Yes. We're just getting to know. Oh, this is a nice spot. That goes there. And now begins the climb for Van Lin. Full utility for Sunrise. Aggression doesn't stop. Lazy Lion just taking an early fight with Sick. Sunrise on the opposite side. Sunrise has been good for the trades, but now is left on an island. Fortunately, some help is just around the corner, but it's a second too late. Pony couldn't find too much. Katarina will collect two on the round, and now only two Launching remain smoke. from closing out this game. The two players here was at B side on the attacking side and getting pinched as well. Nowhere to go, nowhere to hide against CSG. Um, uh, Meg finds one, backs away from it. Now three players just around the corner and they're all stimmed up. And it's Defenders Megalodon who is taken down. So DSG will find a 13 to zero victory and secure themselves a series in 2-0 fashion over Van Lynn Magenta. It goes back to what you mentioned. If, if you're a fan uh, of DSG and if you follow a couple of the players like Katarina and Hannah, specifically the ones that are the most known in this scene, this is the kind of scores that you want to see from them early on. Mm -hmm. And the scores that they're giving to you and they're making it fun, right? We've seen the double duelist. We got to see a little bit of Yoru. We got to see a little bit of Reyna. A uh, test of everything that shows, I think, in the long run, how the flexibility for the squad is going to look like. And I know we talked about it at the beginning. Is this a, is a squad that has the potential to make it all the way to the main event i think i think they have just looking at the roster just looking at the the way that the org has always been so supportive of all the players that they bring mm -hmm. up to this organization there's a big chance to see that here lemon uh yikes 13 oh are we so serious are we so serious this is how this ended tanner <laughs> i gotta go to you first man what did Van Lynn struggled with the most? We went from two rounds on Pearl to zero on Fracture. It, insanity didn't work. Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, the insanity didn't work. They still stuck to their guns though, which was nice to see. Uh, you could just kind of tell that the difference in in caliber between what this DSG roster is bringing to it. it the, like going into this one, a map down obviously for Van Lynn, but then also going to a map where. Uh, uh, you know, Megan said they have no practice on this one. They were hoping to ban this one away. It just adds more to the the uncomfortability that they were already feeling. And then Van Lin just never had a second to breathe. Whether they were fighting on one side of the map and getting nothing or being fought on the other side and just getting run down, they didn't really have a second to, to kind of, you know, relish what was happening or revel in what was happening outside of the one timeout that they took. It, it, this was just, it was very oppressive from DSG. It also goes back to something that we mentioned in the first map of Pearl, where we got to see a lot more of her skills going actually the way of Van Lin. It, it mm -hmm. was pretty even actually when you when you look back at the, the pressure that they were putting, the success that they were finding early on. But here on Fracture, it was the complete opposite. No first kills we could actually see going the way of Van Lin. It was extremely difficult because of the clear game plan as well that came through from the side of DSG. It, it was always, this is how it's going to be executed. Uh, ben Lin wants to play aggressive. Okay, we're going to wait around. They're going to back up. And then that is your cue to go in and to get that first kill again to catch them off guard. And it, that was something that was happening so many times, so many rounds. You know what really caught us off guard though, Triad? I know you were a huge fan of the Reyna and all the duelists <laughs> that we saw today. Game Changers is always innovating. <laughs> 
there was a there was a little bit of everything and again you don't get this in challengers you don't get this uh you don't get this in america's you get it here <laughs> and it's great to see that reina the jet the neon the race as well that were being played mm. by both teams and and a lot of kind of metas that we've seen across valorant especially on these maps you've seen them find success uh that reina was working out for the post planet and i mentioned it uh, throughout it was that leer coming through then you were either forced to back up or to have that mm -hmm. support who's gonna take it down who's gonna go for the kill and in the little ways is the way that that creativity is really finding success for inside of dsg yeah and uh to van lynn's credit i i think the the way that they played the map i think they have a really good idea of, of how to how they want to play pearl how they want to play fracture but again, this is a team that's only been doing it for, you know, three and a half weeks and not everybody has this extensive resume. So I think I'm hoping they're they're not out just yet. They are still working their way through the groups, uh, but I'm hoping that we do get to see this team. And if not, you know, in Sakura Cups coming up or or GC3, I, I'm hoping that we see them stick together. So that way we can see because it's it's a good, you know, the eye test is, hey, these guys know what they're doing around the map, right? Uh, they're They're playing the map really well. They're just not necessarily doing it well together. And once we see the pieces fit together nicely, I think this Van Lin squad will be uh, one that will be, you know, seeing move deeper into groups earlier in these stages. And, and that's a great point. Great, good ideas, execution still need to be worked on mm -hmm. and they have the experience, but just needing more of it. And that's what this platform is all about. But let's take a look at the Prime Gaming post-match highlights. It was a short series, but a really, really entertaining one. 13-2 on Pearl, 13-0 on Fracture. And like you guys had pointed out, we saw the creativity. We, we saw some fun approaches from both sides on both maps, from, from your run Pearl to all the duelists that we saw. Uh, Tanner, this match definitely delivered on that front. Yeah, it, it did. And fortunately, this is the first one and there's more to come. So there is a world where we do still get to see some some uh, some of these teams cook, I guess, uh, for for lack of a better oh, term. They, they're they're going to cook. Don't worry. <laughs> they're going to cook. <laughs> well, uh, Tanner, I also wanted to point out since, you know, this is all about highlighting the, the amazing talent that we have. If you had a Metro MVP oh. to give this match, I had to find something that fits with m you know metro, <laughs> yeah. the metro sure. mvp i don't know if that makes sense but was there a player that you think really deserved it today and dried you can like cook something up too yeah i don't i don't think my word is enough to call anybody the mvp <laughs> uh but I mean, I, I I was impressed by just the way that everybody was playing, the flexibility to see uh, you know, Katarina go from duelist to to brimstone of all yeah. agents. Um, unstable kind of doing the same thing, going from Yoru to, to Cypher and showing like all the things got a little awkward showing the, I, I guess maybe like du duelist lurking is a thing, but I thought unstable really stood out in the way that they played Cypher in this second match after coming off of a Yoru game, right? Like dancing around the cages really well, finding that 4k dry had pointed out a lot of unstable's lurks and, and they were just finding yeah. a lot of success. So I would lean towards unstable, but again, what is, what is my word? <laughs> <laughs> I was a big fan of the Yori Jaya. Do you have a Metro MVP? I don't think anything with D makes sense, but <laughs> what do <Yeah>. you have? <laughs> uh, to me, it's Katarina. Again, a player that is back, uh, that we saw competing in Game Changers before, finding some success against big teams, then going into a little bit of a streamer arc, and now <laughs> going back to, to competing and seeing her in Game Changers again, I think it's amazing. She's extremely flexible, as we got to see in only two maps, a very different agents mm. that she was playing. And she really understands the game. I think that is what she brings to the table. And that's why you're probably going to continue to see her throughout this Game Changers. Oh, uh, we'll see. Production helped us out. Dryad Deadeye of the match. Yeah. I love that one there a lot. <laughs> well, we'll have to cook with that one. Game Changers is always <laughs> cooking. Um, you guys will want to stay tuned after this. We're going to have the Verizon post-match interview with someone from DSG. But for the moment, now for real Z's this time, enjoy the Prime Gaming post-match highlights. We'll see you after this.
Live. I've got the head coach of DSG on the line, Chris. Hello. Congratulations on the dominant win today. Y'all look like you had a lot of fun. Was this a huge confidence boost for the team in order for y'all to make it out of groups? Uh, I think it was. I mean, coming into today, we were like, wow, we're going to have a lot of eyes on us, right? Not only just being like DSG, uh, but, you know, being some returning like pro players who took a little bit of hiatus and some newer, newer, I guess, up, up and coming talents. Uh, we were a little nervous coming into today and our comms kind of were a little cluttered at first, but we settled down, especially on Fracture and uh, we closed it out. You settled down all right. You didn't give up a single round. Holy cow. <laughs> but it's a really cool story how this team came together. Tell us about how the players got on this roster and how did you find yourself on this team? Yeah, so for me, I thought I was actually going to retire. In fact, uh, like we were talking about before the interview started, I was uh, I was planning on retiring and going back to engineering. But Toast kind of came to me with an idea of uh, what he envisioned for a GC roster and what he wanted to do. And I was all in for it. So here I am. Uh, and then after that, I kind of wanted to start with uh, some newer, newer talents, newer names. And so uh, Josh, Nat and Misu were are already on my list of people to look at. And once we settled in them as a core, we kind of brought in the, the veterans, Katarina and Hannah. So that's kind of how the roster got put together. It's nice that you have this mixed bag of experience, leaders, people that can grow, have the ceiling, a very high ceiling that they can meet. Um, but I'm glad to find you back in Valorant. You left engineering behind, but you're engineering something all right with these compositions. Um, how, have been, how are these brainstorming sessions going? Is this your cooking? Is this the players bringing up these ideas? How's that going? Yeah, so I'd say uh, collectively we've all been brainstorming together. Um, I have an assistant coach who's been helping me. His name's Pat. Uh, he's been cooking up some stuff in the lab too. But uh, we really wanted to kind of put on a show as well for uh, VCT Game Changers. I mean, we're kind of also known as a content creator team, so we're putting that uh, putting that at our forefront. So pulling out some of these comps, being able to make them work, kind of just shows our capability of being competitive and content creators. Yes, and that's important. Content creation. That's what we love about the issue. That's what we love about y'all. Congratulations on the win today. Um, do you have any shout outs, final words for maybe the teams in your group or the people watching? Yeah, outside of uh, Pat, I really want to thank all my friends who have been like uh, tier one, tier two pros who have helped us prep for GC. Uh, they scrim us every day and kind of help us out with a little bit of direction of what works and what doesn't. And then other than that, I want to thank all of the DSG supporters out there, and I hope you all continue to support us. It's co there's quite a DSG fan club out there, and they're cheering you on every step of the way. Thank you so much, Chris, for taking the time, and best of luck in your next matches. Thank you. Thanks again, Chris. Um, Y'all, that was the post-match Verizon interview with Chris, uh, head coach of DSG. We got one more match today. I know it's felt like a quick one, but that's just, you know, the DSG dominance for you. But we're going to have a close one. We're going to send it to an extended brace so we can just wait for that first round to all complete. We're going to be heading to the next round of our groups and we'll pick the best match for you. So get your popcorn ready. You're going to have a lot of time to get snacks and we'll see you after this. Red Bull gives you wings. He is currently unstoppable. True. He is just a consistent demon. El Diablo. Hey guys, it's Ye. Welcome to my course on Optimal Valorant Training. I'm going to be demonstrating now some angle clearing. I'll slowly come around the corner as well, making sure no one's on these off angles. 